Today I really want to talk about the onboarding process for software developers and to talk about some of my opinions and tips for onboarding if you are the one onboarding into a new company. If you're new here or you don't know me, then my name is Gwen. I run this channel on YouTube talking about software development. Sometimes I do tutorials and sometimes I do advice videos like this one. I've been working in the industry for over six years now as a software developer in various roles and I've gotten to see both sides of onboarding at this point at different companies. I've onboarded into quite a few different companies and I've also been in charge of onboarding other developers, either as a mentor or leading the onboarding process. So let me dive into some of the tips and pieces of advice I have for you onboarding at a new company. I want to start with the period of time from when you get the offer and you accept the offer. So usually when you accept a job offer, you'll have a couple weeks before you actually start working at that job. So here are some recommendations I have for you during that period of time leading up to day one when you actually start working. The first thing I think to do leading up to starting at a new company is to ask a lot of questions. Now, if you went through a rigorous interview process and you had all your questions and topics planned for each stage of the interview, then you probably already have a lot of information about the company and what it's going to look like when you start working there. Once you accept an offer, I think it's good to even dive in a little bit deeper and especially go over all your notes from the interviews and see what information you might be missing. For example, did you ask enough questions about their processes, about how they manage their projects, about how your onboarding flow is going to look? Maybe you are missing some elements of what they're using in their tech stack. All of those questions, I think to reduce anxiety and to also properly prepare for starting in a new company, it's good to have a list of all the information you want to gather and make sure you have all of that information or all of those details. From interviewing, you will have contact information for people at the company. So if you find that you're missing some information that you would like, you know, you can always reach out to the people in charge of hiring you or the developers on the team or whomever you met. And they will usually be more than happy to share that information with you. And even they'll probably be really excited that you are so eager in your preparation for starting at the company. So after information gathering, I consider it to be part of my job just as a professional to prepare myself in terms of technical skills and knowledge before I actually start working. So what that looks like is usually I will take a look at their tech stack, at their processes. If there's anything I am unsure of or any technologies I haven't used before, then I will go and research that and maybe even build a project in it, watch some tutorials, read the documentation, etc., just to get up to speed a little bit before I start so I can jump in and be more productive at the beginning. And again, that's something that is good for me and good for the company in preparation. And it's also a great thing to reduce anxiety. So taking all of these preparation steps makes me better able to smoothly transition into a new job. So now let me talk about the process from day one. So when your onboarding actually starts and I'm not going to talk about all the things like getting your HR paperwork done, signing up for accounts, setting up your dev environment, all of that stuff is obvious. So these are just some tips that I think are generally helpful in onboarding. The first thing is that you should ask them if they have documentation about how they onboard. If they have a well-organized onboarding process, there should be some kind of documentation where they have all of the stages and all of the milestones set for onboarding for the first few weeks and the first few months, etc. If they don't have that, it usually means they're a little bit disorganized or maybe they're a smaller company and they just haven't created that documentation yet. So that might be a good opportunity for you to start contributing your ideas. Say, hey, why don't we define this onboarding process? Either way, they should assign you a mentor or have someone there who's going to be available 
for you to help train you and also be there to answer your questions and help you through at least your first couple tickets that you're working on. If they don't have that, then make sure you ask for that. It's perfectly acceptable for you to give them feedback and say, hey, I need more help with this, or I don't understand this, or I need somebody to be working with me more frequently every day. I want to pair program, I want to do this, this is how I learn or how I need to learn and onboard. Can you accommodate me here? The second tip I have is that it's very important from the beginning to share with people about your personality and communication preferences and also on the other side get to know other people's personality and communication preferences. One thing that I like to do when I start at a new company is just telling people very directly, hey, this is my style of communication. I have a very direct style of communication. If you don't like something I say or you think I did or said something incorrectly, then please, I want to know about it right away. Sometimes I also like to let people know about any problems or issues that I'm trying to work on about my own personality. And I'll ask them, hey, if I do this thing, then please bring it up so I can fix it. And just in general, over the years, I think I've just learned to be a little bit more open and vulnerable with people on my team. And in turn, that's helped me have a lot better relationships with teams that I've been working on. Related to this is that you have to get to know your team in order to do that. Some people are more or less comfortable being direct and sharing things directly. So I think it's great to try to spend time with each individual team member. If you work in an office, maybe you could schedule lunches or walks or something with each different team member on different days to kind of get to know everybody. If you are remote, it's pretty easy to schedule quick Zoom calls. Just ask for some individual one-on-one -on -one time with each team member and don't talk about tickets or work or anything like that, but just kind of try to get to know them on a little bit more of a personal level. And I like to take lots of notes from these meetings so that I can look back over them and review them if I'm going to talk to that team member again. And for me especially, that makes it much easier for me to communicate and kind of fit in on the team. It's just a great thing for relationship building in general. Tip number three I have is about learning the code base, the company, and the industry. I think especially for smaller companies or depending on what kind of team you're working on, it's really important to not just understand the code, but also understand the business use cases and things like industry terminology and maybe what other companies are doing in your space and what kind of clients you have and things like that. I think that can really help you be a more valuable team member with more ideas and a better understanding of what the product you're building actually needs to do and what you're trying to accomplish. Now for the diving into the code base part, there's a lot of detail there and a lot of ideas that I have about that or thoughts that I have about that. So I'm actually going to make a separate video on that topic. But in terms of starting to learn the code base and diving into the code, my next tip is to start contributing in any way that you can. A lot of times the easiest contributions to make are when you're onboarding, you have a fresh perspective on the onboarding process, on documentation, on what's missing and what's confusing in the code base and in the team's processes. So a really great contribution that you can make in the start when you're at a new company is actually to document all of those things about the code base processes or anything else and then write it up for the whole team to see and use that or those kind of things as your first contribution to the company so you can start contributing from week one week two in a meaningful way and if you're constantly looking for areas of improvement not just in the ticket that you're working on at the time you're going to be a really valuable developer for that company and for that team. 
My next tips are about checking in with yourself and with your team and managers and also doing some self-reflection as you go along. I think the best place to start with that is if you're coming in from having another developer job or really any kind of job before, it's really nice to reflect as you're transitioning, as you're leaving one company, going into the next company and coming up with all of the things that you want to maybe improve on and maybe some issues that you had at the last company, some things about your personality that you want to work on and then coming up with a plan like how am I going to do better at this next company. I think that's the first type of reflection that I like to do when I join a new company. The next type of self-reflection is after every week and every month, you know, what kind of progress am I making? What kind of contributions am I making to the team? Am I improving continuously? What kind of things do I still need to work on? Like what are my weakest areas? Another type of reflection that I really like to do at a new company is reflecting on how the team operates and also if there are weak areas on the team in general. Like if a team is really weak on testing, let's say, maybe that's one area that I can really put a lot of my energy and focus and make it better for the whole team and make myself more valuable. Of course, reflecting on its own isn't good enough. It's also good to get constant feedback. Of course, you should be getting feedback from your manager, especially whoever is your direct manager. So whoever you're doing your one-on-ones with and that kind of thing. A lot of managers will be giving you feedback on your progress and how you're doing. If they aren't giving you proper feedback, that's something you should absolutely directly bring up with them. Ask them, hey, how do you think I'm doing in terms of team fit, in terms of how I'm doing with my tasks, in terms of the quality of work or any of those kind of things. Now, I think most people or most developers from what I've seen kind of leave feedback at that step. Just get it from their managers, make sure they're growing, they're hitting their milestones going in. You know, I hit my two week milestone, my one month, my two month, my three month milestone. Okay, I'm doing okay. But I think actually maybe the most valuable feedback is from other teammates, asking other teammates, how am I doing? You know, what do you think about my work? How do you think I could improve? Especially the more senior developers on your team. This is something I've always done, especially when I was starting out. I used to try to pick out, okay, these are the senior devs. These are the people I think are really good and I want to learn from them. And I kind of tried to get to know them, get advice, mentorship from them, talk to them as much as I could. I guess get them to rub off on me a little bit and also ask for their feedback. You know, how do you think I'm doing? How do you think I could improve? And I've met several of my mentors who have helped me a lot over the years in becoming a better developer. I've met several of them just by asking for help and feedback at companies. So you're checking in with teammates, you're checking in with your manager, you're checking in with yourself in self-reflection. Now you have to take some action from all of those check-ins and reflections. So whatever weaknesses or things that you find are things you have to turn into actionable tasks. Now that will be different for everybody, but some of the things that I've seen in previous companies, especially with newer developers is that they'll take on a ticket that someone else thinks they might be able to do. And they'll really, really get stuck in the weeds on this. They'll be working, just beating their head against the wall for a week or so and really not getting anywhere, not getting very much done. So I have a couple things to say about that situation. First of all, never be afraid to ask for help. When you are new at a company, that's the best time. Everybody understands being new at something. We've all been beginners, we've all been juniors at some point in some areas of our life, we're all still beginning and being new at things throughout our lives. So everybody understands that. Everybody wants to help somebody who's new. If you ask lots of questions, if you say, hey, I don't understand something, that's not just good for you, it's good for the whole team being able to reassess, are we explaining this well? It's good for people on the team who might be too afraid to speak up and actually ask those questions, or for people on the team who didn't realize they ever needed to ask that question, and now everybody understands that. 
The second thing I would say is that don't be afraid to drop a ticket, especially if it's your first or second ticket. If you're not making progress, if you can't figure it out, if you're like really stressed and you're having a hard time, don't be afraid to drop that ticket and ask for something else. Ask for something you can do. Say, hey, this area of the code base, I don't understand it yet. I either need to pair program with someone or I need to take another ticket. And that should be totally acceptable. And it's actually a much better situation than just trying to brute force your way through a ticket and not getting anywhere. And then just wasting your time and everybody else's time and kind of winding up in frustration. Especially with remote companies, I think it's very easy for people to just kind of disappear and be working on their own, trying to figure something out and being too embarrassed maybe to ask for help. Never be too afraid to ask for help. A lot of times it's a much more effective way to use your time. If you're stuck to ask for help, rubber duck, pair program, do something with somebody else, and then that will unblock you to keep working. Another piece of advice I have for you when starting off at a software company, especially if you're new in your career, is being proactive about your career growth. Let's say you get hired on as a software engineer level one. There's a whole lot of levels ahead of you and a whole lot of directions you can take your career. You could become a tech lead, which is kind of the direction I've gone. You could become an architect. You could go into engineering management. You could just want to get to the senior level and be a really good senior developer and then kind of figure out where you want to go in your career from there. No matter where you want to take your career, there will always be a certain amount of steps in between that goal and you. So it's always a good idea to look at the next step and figure out how do I get to the next step. So if you're level one, you know, how do you get to level two? Well, you have to learn these coding standards and practices and I have to improve at testing and processes and PR reviews and you know, whatever other skills you need for that particular level. And then you can see if the company will invest in your training, maybe you can get some mentoring and coaching from senior developers or something like that. But your career as a software developer is a marathon. So if you have an end goal, it's good to break that down and see what do you need to do next. And that's something that you can try to work on every single week. You can do some studying, some improvement, figure out your weak areas or what your next steps are and kind of work on it a lot over time. There's actually a podcast episode that I listened to recently about these streaks or like small habits that you do over time that build up into something really big. It was a really good short podcast, so I'll link that in the description below. Now, if you don't know where you want to go in your career, I think that's a great use of your one-on-one -on -one time with your manager. I think that's a good starting point for your networking. Try to find people who might be able to give you advice or help in figuring out where you want to go. Maybe that's a good thing to think about before taking new jobs is, will this job allow me to experiment with different things because I don't know exactly which direction I want to go in yet. That's one thing that I found really helpful about working in consulting for so long was that I got to work with lots of different companies from an enterprise to lots of different startups and in tons of different technologies in mobile and web and some other things. So I got to experiment a lot and see what I liked and also get a really broad perspective about the software development world in general. I have a couple other things that I want to mention before closing here. And those are about being patient with yourself and giving yourself some, I guess, compassion and understanding. So many people feel insufficient or inadequate or too slow when they're onboarding, especially because at a tech company or working in technology, every system is a little bit different. Every team dynamic is different. Every team has their own processes and structure. And a lot of times when you're going into a new company, you might be working on a totally new technology or in a new language, or even if it's the same language, it can be hard to ramp up. And you can't set the expectation for yourself that in week one or week two, you're going to be just as productive as you were at your last company before you left, 
or just as productive as the other developers are who have been there longer. Even if you're going in as like a level two, level three, level four, you can't compare yourself to people even at lower levels who have been there longer. You know, they're already in a routine, they already know the code base, they have a smooth flow already, and you're just now learning. As I mentioned before, everybody understands being new at something. So that's not just advice for interacting with other people and not being afraid to ask questions, but it's also for you and understanding that you're new. Give yourself some patience and say, it's okay that I don't understand things. It's okay, I'm just trying to improve. I'm not going to beat myself up over this. That's going to be a much better thing for your mental health in the long run. I think it's also important to realize that not every job or every company is going to be the right fit for you. Sometimes it might be the company didn't hire correctly and you're not exactly what they need in that role. Sometimes the company or the job might not be right for you and you didn't realize that going in. Whatever the case, it's not a shameful thing for a company or a job to not work out. I think it's a natural process and it's something that we can use as a learning opportunity. It doesn't mean that you're a bad developer and you're terrible. And on the flip side, it doesn't necessarily mean that the company and the team is terrible too. Again, it just might not be the right fit. I have a blog post about a job that I took back in 2017 that was not the right place for me at all. I learned a lot from that. My interviewing got way better after I took that job. I realized I was missing a lot of the questions that I should be asking when I am interviewing for jobs. I'll link that blog post that I wrote for Free Code Camp in the description below. Most people think of that as a failure, like, oh, you took the wrong job or you didn't work out. But actually, I think that's such an important learning opportunity and that just kind of puts you one step closer to finding the right fit for you or a company that will work out and will be somewhere that you can thrive. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you got something out of this video. If you have anything to add, maybe you have your own tips or ideas, please leave a comment below. You can also join me in my Discord chat if you want to discuss or ask questions over there. That link is in the description. I have quite a few other videos planned in this series about topics that I've been wanting to talk about for a while. I want to say good luck with your new job or if you are onboarding currently at a company. I hope that process is smooth and goes well for you. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video.